tohto fulgenu. A daj si tie čeri tohto vpadu osa a chtiebe tie aj zavrieť, ale to tam zavrieť, e kvíže, e kvíže si ono. E vo prezento veze, troška respekte, v nemu lezes, to je to optimum kontrol o fusfeiru. Toto je vse. There is uh, some help from uh, uh, Dr. Adair as the uh, uh, daughter of, uh, of your uh, National, National, National Education Institute. Okay. okay. Thank you, Prof. Adel. Uh, I think we are discussing today one, one very important topic which is touching all the nephrologists about uh, the diet and for security and the analysis patient and we we'll take it from two aspects from the nephrology aspect of view and from the nutritionist and we we'll make it as a dialogue the combination between the two the nephrologist and the dietitian it is my honor to introduce my colleague Dr. Ahmed uh, it is a consultant at the National Research Institute in Cairo and uh, concerned only with the dietitian for uh, renal patients. Today, our objectives will do the introduction about integrated renal care, nutritional counseling, and the importance of renal diet. Second part, uh, control of serum phosphorus. Uh, Type 2 dietary phosphorus and mortality, dietary and dietary phosphorus and protein and conclusion. The first point we will discuss about all of us know knows about the stage of CKD, which is depending on GFR, we are making it five stages from five from stage one to stage five. Every stage has a fiction on hemostasis. One of the major advantages these stages that every stage has their own action. Let us go to stage three, where depending on the stage, depending on the action in stage three, the nephrologist will go to prevent the application of CKD, mineral metabolism, nutritional monitoring, and anemia prevention. So the control and the management of phosphorus, calcium, and the paratide hormone, the milk bone profile. We will start from stage 3 in CKD. One of the very irritating questions to all of us after we are seeing any patient in our clinics that the patient coming in the end while he's going from the set asking us what I will eat. I will eat in the Arabic language. All of us will stand in front of the patient who don't like the answer. What is the answer will answer but what is the answer will give to the patient? Let us discuss in the lecture today what is what, how can how can we manage in this situation? The uh, care process requirements, multidisciplinarity for patient care, uh, it including the uh, combination of nephrologist, nurse, pharmacist, social worker, and pa uh, patient best friends, a renal specialist dietitian, and a diabetes educator, and a uh, psychotherapist, uh, or division speakers. So let us go. How did the importance in the nephrology team to have a dietitian with them? The registered dietitian nutritionist can be the parent for medical nutrition therapy and chronic kidney disease stage from stage 3 to stage 4. For a specific clinical under center for medication and the medical service coverage. This pre dialysis medication, medical nutrition and therapy counseling have been shown to cause potential. It has two major advantages. First one, it can cause delay from progression to stage five. It can cause a delay to pass to the renal replacement therapy. It can cause delay, decrease the first year of mortality after initiation for hemodialysis. So, education or nutritional approach and the adaptation in context of CKD must be a part of the management at post early and advanced stages of CKD. In this study, the uh, effect of personalized nutritional counseling in maintenance, healing, and 
status show is that nutrition is and the patient's raw nutrition and counseling can increase patient's knowledge and empower, uh, empower them uh, with their skills, encourage the patient to select uh, for our best foods of uh, them, uh, and promote behavior changes uh, and maintain long term in uh, adherence to recommended dietary regimens and to optimal nutritional prescription that can contribute to reduce cardiovascular risk factors and prevent malnutrition. Why diet is important? Uh, in CKD patients maintain optimal nutritional status, prevent protein energy malnutrition, slow the rate of disease progression, prevent or treatment of complications and other medical conditions as diabetes, hypertension, dyslipidemia, uh, and cardiovascular diseases, anemia, metabolic acidosis, and secondary hyperparathyroidism. But uh, in hemodialysis patients, renal diet minimizes the amount of wastes, a good meal plan choice, minimizes build up of waste products and fluid between sessions, between sessions. Uh, improve nutritional and functional status and preserve muscle mass. Many nutrition is here in hemodialysis. Clinical studies have shown that renal patients will be having adequate dietary intake during the early stages. All of us are going to very this direction for the diet, for the patient, for stage 3. So, 40 to 70 percent of the patients in this stage renal disease are malnourished. Take energy malnutrition should be avoided in maintenance hemodialysis patients because of poor patient outcome. All of us have to know that we have two types of malnutrition type 1 and type 2 have been described in CQD patient even in hemodialysis patient. Second point is that this has effect in nutrition analysis per se? The answer is yes. Because in hemodialysis and spontaneous dialysis, it does go item by item. Loss of amino acids in hemodialysis in every session, with patients losing from 6 to 8 grams per session, but in CBD, 2 to 4 grams. About glucose, glucose, if we use glucose free dialysate, patients are losing 25 grams of glucose per session, but in CBD, patients are taking glucose from the BD fluid. About to leave no return loss in hemodialysis, but in BD from 5 to 15 gram loss per year back. The two processes are in perimeter. So the two processes are have catabolic and they can cause release of cytokines in BD or in hemodialysis. The other point is that this is an effect also, yes, about dialysis adequacy. The first point we have to look for talking about the nutrition in the in, in hemodialysis patient about dialysis adequacy. In France, they have a the center who have daily hemodialysis for six sessions per week. So what happened to the patient there? They improve the appetite and the slow food intake. They have general feeding of well-being, increase their physical activity, decrease their fewer diabetic restrictions, decrease the dose of medication, if we speak and we test some and the high even the hypertensive medication, increasing clearance of tension and loss of fat, when they are eating better, eating well, and you improve the serum and human level, which consists of both the body and mental health. When we plan the diet of patients after assessing the assessments, uh, diet focused on CKT and CKT patient and hemodialysis, important treatments and treatments. Uh, calories, protein, carbohydrate, and fat, and cholesterol. So, uh, in CKT or hemodialysis, <coughs> but in hemodialysis, we focus uh, also electrolytes uh, uh, as in uh, sodium uh, and fluids, potassium, uh, phosphorus, and calcium. In CKT patients, uh, we should restrict the phosphorus uh, uh, value in diet in CKT from stage 3. Individual differences, size of uh, diet, uh, and calorie intake according to uh, nutrition assessment. Uh, but in CKD patients, uh, we should uh, uh, 
know uh, about the stage. Uh, diet goals, uh, we should maintain uh, good, uh, with, uh, with uh, patient uh, or maintain weight or increase weight or loss of weight according to uh, body mass index uh, and good uh, nutrition management of blood pressure glucose and uh, minerals we all uh, felt. Protein intake. Protein intake in stage 1 to 3 0.75 gram per kg per day but in stage 4 or 5, not on dialysis, uh, protein requirement intake 0.6 gram per kg per day. In stage 5 on dialysis, the hemodialysis or proteinian dialysis 1.2 to 1.3 gram per kg per day. Uh, for example, if patient weighed uh, 68 kg, uh, your uh, uh, protein recommendation 55 grams. But in four or five stage, not on dialysis, protein intake decreased, become uh, 41 uh, to 48 grams. In stage five, in hemodialysis, increase protein intake uh, 82 uh, grams uh, per day. Uh, all stages, if, marinal, if, if this patient is malnourished, we should eat additional protein. As we said in the start, phosphorus is very difficult to control in our CKD and participation. So let us go what going with phosphorus. Phosphorus is a mineral found in almost all foods. Serum living may be within the range until CKD is advanced up to increase the renal secretion layer. The parasite hormone and the F F FGF 23. Intestinal absorption is increased by 1.25 at What is the effect of high serum phosphorus? It can cause itchiness, renal bone disease, calcification of the blood vessel and soft tissue, and hyperparathyroidism. Phosphorus let us know that the only serum phosphorus represents less than 1.1% of the total body phosphorus. So, serum phosphorus is less than 1% of the total serum phosphorus. And the intake is equal to daily 1 to 1 to 1.5 gram per day. And how is the secret? So, how the kidney from 7 to 100 milligram per day? And from the faces, it could move 600 milligram per day. And the 200 only are moving. 200 are moving from in and out so through the through the intravascular phosphorus. So, 1, 1 gram, 1.5 intake per day, 600 is excreted by the faces, about 800 is excreted by the, by, the, by the kidney, and 200 only moving from and into the, the bones. In this review, the only suggestion about this review, the author, when you, when you go very deeply, I found one of the key documentary finds in was published in 2009 that in patients with CKD stage 3 to 6 5, we suggest to make the serum phosphorus in the normal range. We suggest limiting the dietary phosphorus into the treatment of the hyperphosphatemia alone or in combination with the other treatment. Very important point why you are interested with the phosphorus? Because phosphorus is associated with high mortality. In this, article, in this research article, the author concluded that phosphate overload and the hyperphosphatemia have emerging risk factor for vascular calcification, cardiovascular mortality, cardiovascular mortality. Only this. Also in this review, in this, this post-higher dietary phosphorus intake and the greater dietary phosphorus to protein ratio are associated with increased death risk in mineral and maintenance hemodialysis patient. So, also in this, in this one, they contribute the risk of controlling serum phosphorus by restricting the heavy protein intake may out, outweigh the benefit of controlling the phosphorus, but it may be greater mortality because of are very restricting the total protein for the patient. So, we need to control the phosphorus and at the same time giving the patient is enough protein intake.
This is the whole the code that the key the key thing will be by the target levels about the parathyroid, phosphorus, and the calcium in every stage in CKD. In the stage 3, the target BDH is about 70, the phosphorus level 2.7 to 4.6, and the calcium from 8.4 to 10.2. In stage 4, BDH target higher target 110, and the same phosphorus and same of calcium. But in stage 5, the higher target of BDH about 300. Phosphorus 3.5 to 5.5 and calcium 8.4 and 2.9.5. But we have to know calcium phosphate product must not be exceed 55. Because if it exceeds 55, we will have a further complication of the calcium of the, of the, of the, of the hyperphosphatemia, the form of the calcium cardiovascular and the condition of the phosphate in the blood vessels. Control of phosphorus important for CKD and new dialysis patients. Phosphorus restriction is uh, uh, slow progression of renal diseases, prevent or reserve uh, renal secondary hyperparathyroidism, limit renal interstitial, uh, mineralization, inflammation, and fibrosis. Uh, treatment consideration. Uh, for uh, phosphorus control in CKD patients, maintain serum phosphorus within the normal range, assess current dietary habits, limit protein intake, reduce phosphorus intake by ensure patients uh, is aware of phosphorus content of different foods, suggest limiting intake of uh, processed food and drink uh, high phosphorus content foods. Highlights the need of maintaining adequate nutritional intake to avoid protein energy wasting. What considering the phosphate binder prescription? We have to evaluate most appropriate phosphate binders and formulate and dose. Discuss the patient beliefs. We have to be very important because some patient believes in very, in very, in very bad way. So I'm concerned about the medication to, to provide the adherence. Discuss the possibility of self adjustment of phosphate by drug dose. But in him, dialysis maintain in him, dialysis patient, treatment consideration for uh, phosphorus control, lower uh, elevated phosphorus levels toward the uh, normal range, maintain uh, an optimal protein intake, 1.1 gram per kg per day, assess the healthy habits and advise on reducing phosphorus intake, but with particular emphasis of maintaining adequate protein intake. Also, in the we have to consider phosphate binder prescription. We have to avoid calcium-based phosphate binder inhibition as hypercalcemic or consistent to lower parathyroid measurement and adjust the dialysis prescription dialysis dose because in case of hyperphosphatemia due to poor dialysis, we have to improve the dialysis adequacy. Types of dietary phosphorus, two types organic and organic phosphorus. Organic phosphorus uh, found naturally uh, in uh, most foods the, uh, as uh, their product is meat, poultry, fish, soya, and soya milk, tofu, uh, nuts and seeds, dry, uh, dry beans and peas, and whole grains. This type of organic phosphorus absorbed uh, uh, between 40 to 60%. Uh, because uh, these foods containing phytate, or phytate reduce absorption, but another type of uh, uh, dietary phosphorus, in organic phosphorus, uh, found in food uh, artificially, uh, food uh, additives, dietary supplement, cancer fortified uh, fortifications. Uh, this type of organic food, in organic food, uh, phosphorus, uh, absorb it over the 90%. Uh, phosphate binders in effective of this type of inventory phosphorus. So we should read the ingredient labels uh, of any products. Dietary management, this table shows that source of uh, phosphorus, plant based foods, and the animal based foods, processed or enhanced foods. For example, uh, plant based foods, uh, most fruits and vegetables. Less than content of phosphorus, uh, about nuts and seeds and legumes, high phosphorus, phosphorus type of this plant based food, organic uh, and uh, it contained phytate or phytic acid, uh, 
about uh, animal uh, based foods as meat, fish, dairy, dairy products, and eggs, hard phosphorus, organic phosphorus of type, but processed or enhancing food, uh, example, beverage, processed meat, and other cheese, uh, other products. Uh, it content uh, of phosphorus, high phosphorus uh, content, type of phosphorus of these foods in organic. This chart increasing phosphorus absorption uh, from plant based foods to uh, artificial foods. Plant based foods absorb it less than 50%, but animal based foods 40 to 60% absorb it. Fast foods or artificial foods uh, over the 90 to 100 percent. Uh, this phosphorus experiment uh, uh, designed in Italian uh, last year, a visual uh, tool of that phosphorus man management in the patient and sick the patient. The aim of the phosphorus pyramid uh, is to support the actual counseling uh, in order to reduce the phosphorus load and uh, uh, how uh, to, to manage CKD uh, MBD. Uh, this uh, pyramid it has colored edges from green to red that correspond to recommended intake frequency, uh, frequency ranging from unrestricted to avoided uh, as must possible. A phosphorus content by food growth, organic phosphorus, Types uh, or food growth, grains and vegetables, fruits, milk, meat, oils, and uh, about, uh, beverage or calories additives. Um, in uh, in, uh, in uh, food growth, grains, whole or refined grains. Whole grains over the refined grains of content phosphorus. In whole grains, phosphorus content. For beer serving, 85, but in uh, refined grains, 33 uh, milligram per kg. Beer serving. Protein rich foods have phosphorus, as we show. Uh, legumes content of one serving, half cup, contain 120. Uh, uh, a milligram per serving, but in milk, one cup, it contains 247, meat, one ounce, or 30 gram of meat, it contains 62 gram, milligram per ounce. Most protein-rich uh, foods are source of phosphorus, as we uh, show, uh, meat and fish and egg. Egg white, less than content of phosphorus. Uh, we ask uh, uh, organic or more, uh, inorganic dietary phosphorus we should intake. This study shows that a strong belief suggests that in patients with CKD, a mixed composition of dietary animal and plant foods, uh, rich in phytic acid, should be encouraged while intake of uh, processed food should be limited. Hidden phosphorus. Many products may have added phosphorus. Common phosphorus additives including dicalcium phosphate, monocalcium phosphate, and trisodium phosphate, phosphoric uh, acids. The use of phosphorus as food additives is increasing and a high degree of uh, bioavailability of this form of phosphorus presents a real challenge for management of serum phosphate and risk of coronary kidney disease MBT. How to heat for the labels? When they uh, uh, are looking for phosphorus or uh, world phosphorus uh, in package, show different food when ingredients list has phosphorus. This ingredients list shows that 
the food has added phosphorus. We should avoid it, these products. Phosphorus and beverage chronic, and chronic kidney diseases. High battery phosphorus intake of from this uh, type of foods, uh, increasing risk of hyperphosphatemia and uh, to poor results of, uh, obtained by treatment to reduce hyperphosphatemia. Uh, this uh, product is harmful for CKD patient and also for in general population. This study uh, focused awareness among chronic kidney diseases patient regarding food uh, and drinks containing artificial added phosphorus. Our surveys results suggest that CKD patients under undergoing hemodialysis are not adequately aware of hidden phosphorus or hidden source of phosphorus in their diet and emphasize the need of educational initiation and initiative uh, to raise awareness of these issues among, among CKD patients. That phosphorus and protein. The new way uh, to look uh, phosphorus uh, in foods uh, called phosphorus to protein ratio, ratio based on phosphorus to protein. Uh, in this uh, method, uh, uh, classification protein to protein ratio to five or four uh, tissues. Uh, first uh, type uh, protein to protein, uh, phosphorus to protein ratio is uh, five. Second, uh, between five to ten milligram uh, phosphorus to protein, one gram protein. Third, uh, ten to five. Uh, we uh, show. Equivalent less than uh, five, uh, one gram protein from uh, egg white contains 1.4 milligram phosphorus, uh, but uh, in whole egg with egg yolk, whole egg one large, it contains uh, 13.3 milligram phosphorus per one gram, per one gram protein. About uh, egg yolk, uh, one large, uh, it contains uh, phosphorus uh, over the uh, 20 uh, milligram per gram protein of egg yolk, and it, hina, it contains high phosphorus, uh, phosphorus to protein ratio on these types, uh, 43.1 uh, uh, milligram of phosphorus. A higher battery phosphorus protein intake ratio is associated with incremental death risk. In patients along with her hemodialysis, we recommend it or uh, best uh, choice, or for example, a good example, a quiet phosphorus protein ratio is then 2 mg per, per gram protein. Uh, and uh, egg white is high biological value, it contains essential amino acids and uh, low fat, amount of fat, especially cholesterol and phosphorus. A vegetarian compared to with meat, this study uh, 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 comparison uh, between a vegetarian and meat that protein sources a, phos uh, a phosphorus. This study uh, shows that uh, amount of protein, amount of protein uh, source of fat in animal protein, we should uh, selection uh, from egg white. Planting nutrition and serum phosphorus in maintaining hemodialysis restricted that protein to help control phosphorus levels in patients undergoing hemodialysis may be more harmful than clinical. Uh, more important, increasing awareness uh, of an inorganic phosphorus in food additives may lead to significant improvement in dietary phosphorus restriction regimes. Uh, this study, uh, the goal of this study was to assess the effect of boiling uh, on phosphate and protein nutrition changes in commonly used foods containing protein in high biological value. 
this uh, boiling uh, reduces the three phosphate while preserving protein intake. This a better control of phosphate balance, balance together with lower risk of phos uh, phosphorus and uh, keeping uh, protein in the light and uh, lowering the risk of protein malnutrition. Recommendation in How we can control phosphorus level? We have to know. We have three steps to us to, to do it. First one, diet. Painter, third point is adequate diet. The first control about diet to control phosphorus levels of the diet. We uh, advise the patient is eat small portions for high in protein meals and snack. snack. Uh, as meat, poultry, and fish, dairy products or dairy foods, and beans and uh, nuts. Uh, eat, uh, eat fresh fruits and vegetables and watch uh, con uh, potassium content. Avoid bran, cereals, egg yolk, and cola. Read ingredients labels to find phosphorus additives. Uh, low phosphorus diet is uh, able to decrease serum phosphorus and uh, fibroblast cross uh, factors 22, uh, 23 levels. Uh, what are high and low phosphorus content foods? Uh, first, high content phosphorus foods as dairy products, nuts, seeds, bean nuts, better, uh, uh, dry beans and peas. Uh, beverage and other whole grains, high protein. But low phosphorus content in other foods as fresh fruits, fresh vegetables, we should watch the potassium content, uh, popcorn, uh, rice, cereals, and coffee or tea with milk, without milk. Control. So the Torah said about the first step about the diet. Let me talk about the binder. We have many types, mainly four types of phosphate binder. The first one, the calcium acetate. The calcium acetate 667. It can estimate the movement in capacity 30 mg only. Renal gel the 800 mg. It can remove only 64 mg of phosphorus. Calcium carbonate, the 500 to 600. Can remove only 20 to 24. Length and carbonate, the 1000 milligram can remove 320 milligram. We need to know that phosphate binders are available in non chewable tablet, the chewable and the chewable type, liquids, powder, and dosing option. Same types of patient binder, of phosphate binder, the metal based, calcium based, and the metal free, calcium free. Phosphate binder help to maintain serum phosphate level in the recommended range. Have benefit effect on the term of reducing calcification of the serum FGF23 levels. Help the patient management phosphorus level without the need of restriction of vitamin protein. In key look at the guidelines published in 2009, patient with CKD stage 3 to 5 will suggest using the phosphorus binding agent in the treatment of hyperphosphatemia. By reducing the amount of dietary phosphorus absorbed from the gut, phosphate binders help to control serum phosphate level and are used to use the by 7 to 90 of patients receiving hemodialysis in your world. About dialysis, the same point about dialysis. How dialysis help in the control of phosphorus? Among the dialysis patients with persistent hyperparasitosis, we suggest increasing your phosphate removal by hemodialysis. Phosphate clearance is effective only during the first two hours of dialysis. 
Sie auf uns fährt, die Leben und Ton, die Tür, 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 die Let us to see how we can put control the phosphate balance by diet, by spender, by adequate dialysis. If we make the phosphate intake per day 5.1000 per gram per day for the patient, so by weight 7000. Absorb it 60%, so 6600 milligrams per day, so per week 4200. Bending the, the phosphate bender can per week remove our pain 2100. And the dialysis, every session can remove 700 by three session per week, so 2100, so the balance in the head will be zero. So it's controlled by diet, pain drugs, and adequate dialysis. What is the net conclusion of the discussion today? Uh, multidisciplinary approach, including the experts of uh, qualified dedication, education and nutritional approach, and uh, adaptations. In the context of chronic kidney diseases, must be a part of the patient management at both early and advanced stages. As I said before, the three best ways to keep phosphate level under control are make healthy low phosphate for the choices, adequate dialysis, take phosphate burnt binders with food, and in the end, thank you very much. Thank you very much for the good presentation, important talk. And uh, any questions for the talk? It's a big thing, how do you push? Thank you very much for this presentation, which is very uh, important. <coughs> in our countries, uh, we have a lack of um, health workers, uh, health care workers who are trained in nutrition for patients with CKD or in hemodialysis. So I would like to ask you if there is an uh, opportunity here to have that training. Because uh, only nephrologist, the patient asks questions to nephrologist how they can eat. How they can eat. So, uh, my question is, uh, is to ask if there is opportunities to be trained in nutrition uh, to take care of sick patients. I saw a doctor. Doctor, I saw a doctor. It's a question. It's a question that, that there is here opportunities to be trained in nutrition to take care of patients with CK. Because it's a lack in our you know, uh, all over the world, uh, there is a limitation of few numbers of qualified, certified nutritionists or dietitians. Okay? It's very limited number. In Egypt, we have only one institute in Cairo who can make a qualified nutritionist. The diploma it takes about two years. We have in Mansoura, only this year in 2016, they apply for a fellowship for nutritionists online. Renal, renal only, renal nutritionist online. Dr. Hussain, the head of this team, was Dr. Adwa, 
I think it will start within a few months to start with this program. But it is expensive. I, I understand from Mansoura it will cost 8,000 for the 8,000 uh, USD dollar for the land for the Egyptian. Je remercie à mon tour les présentateurs pour euh, la qualité de la présentation. Euh, mon intervention, c'est surtout un commentaire. Mon commentaire, c'est que, euh, voyez-vous, euh, dans notre contexte de l'Afrique noire, euh, nous sommes... En fait, il y a beaucoup de problèmes. Et souvent, nous, en tant que techniciens, on est euh, devant ce problème de, de nutrition, ou du moins d'alimentation de nos malades, euh, on ne sait pas quoi répondre. Parce que d'abord, euh, c'est des malades qui sont pauvres. Ils ne mangent même pas bien. Euh, deuxièmement, c'est des malades qui sont socialisés. Ils ont en majorité deux séances de dialyse par semaine. Il y a dans certains pays de l'Afrique nord où c'est même une séance de 5 heures de temps par semaine. Dans ces conditions, moi, dans ma petite expérience, quand un malade, en fait, une fois au stade de dialyse, vient vers moi me demander des conseils nutritionnels, franchement, très souvent, je conseille de, de manger pour tout ce que le malade peut. Parce qu'entre la dénutrition, et l'hyperphosphorémie, euh, je ne sais pas quel choix il faut faire. Faudrait-il donner des conseils à un malade d'avoir qui, à la base, est mal nourri, sachant qu'avec la dialyse, il est en danger de malnutrition avec tout ce que cela comporte comme conséquence, ou bien euh, laisser le malade manger tout ce qu'il peut Sachant aussi que de l'autre côté, il y a un risque d'hyper phosphorémie avec ces conséquences. Donc voilà un peu le dilemme auquel nous sommes confrontés. Et moi personnellement, j'ai dit aux malades, en tout cas je, je ne fais pas de restrictions alimentaires. Sauf que par rapport à certains aliments qui sont connus, eh, riches en potassium, j'ai dit bon, en dehors des séances, les jours sans dialyse, de faire attention à tels aliments en tout cas qui est riche en, en potassium. Mais sinon le reste, euh, je laisse le malade en, en tout cas manger. Je préfère ne pas conduire le malade à une dénutrition que voilà. C'est ça un peu ma contribution. Je ne sais pas votre rôle. Qu'est-ce que vous, vous nous conseillez entre le risque d'hyperphosphorémie et le risque de dénutrition Merci. Thank you very much for your short question. Very short. <laughs> uh, you know, uh, the nutrition counseling is very important. But I think uh, we have to educate the nephrology first. Because in many of us are the cause, or the main cause of the rest of the, the malnutrition of our patient. Because we don't like to increase serum creatinine for the patient in stage 3 and 4. So we are very restricting the protein intake and the most, as I said, for our patient are passing to malnutrition. You know, malnutrition and low serum albumin are associated with high morbidity and mortality. For this reason, we have to balance our diet. We have to keep our nutrition in the proper way for the patient, especially in stage 3 and stage 4. With the patient to go to stage 5, the dialysis patient will have to increase for the diet. As we said, the doctor said about the protein intake. We have to increase it. In the end, in the end, we can teach the physician, we can make labels and the flowers and educate our nurses inside the units. Okay, even by videos, by, by, by CDs, by whatever we need, whatever we need, and to give the proper way for the patient to keep. I'll give you an example. 
In my country, in Egypt here, all the patients, most of the patients are coming to the dialysis unit with Pepsi Cola, with Sprite, with Seven Heart. I think maybe in your country also. You know, you know how much you could spend in this, in this, in this time. So, so we have to explain at least, at least we have to know first, and we have to educate our nurses. We can have one, edu one educator or one dietitian in our area, and they can cover all our area for our vision at all. But, but it is very important. To, to be educated and to educate the other about this issue. Yes, please. Thank you so much for your presentation. My question is on the we know that uh, our patients are on so many drugs, so the compliance is quite poor. So I was just wondering, I know you mentioned that when doing dialysis, it's the removal of phosphorus is only effective in the first two hours. So that's what I wanted to find out. Is, is, is that a constant or can this be affected by dialysis prescription? So at the end of the day, I may just deal with the diet and dialysis to prevent a surplus fatigue. It is mandatory. Do you know why? Because the new dialysis, if you dialyze the patient thrice five per week, there is a limitation for extraction of phosphorus. So at the end, if the patient eats, there is positive phosphate balance. That mandate that the patient should use phosphate buyers. But actually it is a problem, as you mentioned. Usually you find a large number of patients who are not adherent to phosphate buyers. And there is a nice uh, the new study showed that if the patient is not adherent to the phosphate binders, the mortality, there is increased solid outcome like mortality and other comorbidity. So again and again and again, as uh, my great brother, Dr. Osama, just minute, uh, a minute ago, stressed upon education. If you educate the patient, this can make a big difference. And you, you should advise him to be adherent to sweet binders, to eat, he should have sweet binders. And the type of sweet binders depends upon the availability and the demographic criteria of the patient. If the patient is within the high risk of vascular classification, we should think of non cancer based. But if you have a limited resource in your country and my country, I utilize the cancer base maximally. But sometimes I am frozen because of hypercalcemia. So it may be problematic. So to optimum control phosphorus, I should optimize dialysis to extract phosphorus. I may prolong time or giving the patient extra dialysis day for dialysis a week. Number two, I use phosphate binders. Number three, I should think of hidden sources of phosphorus. And there are, there are two hidden sources. As uh, Dr. Ma and Dr. Osama mentioned, diet. And if you listen to Dr. Osama's advice regarding the organic phosphorus content that's high in the Coca-Cola and the Pepsi, and they have all these stuffs have no biological values. And the bioavailability of phosphorus approximate 100%. So we should educate the patients. Please don't take these drinks. Also, our patients should, should eat no processed foods. So it should be away from processed foods because processed foods includes also in organic phosphorus. So by this way, and as Dr. Adwa mentioned, boiling 
and extracting the water because if you boil, the water will contain large portion of phosphorus. So if you boil and get rid of the soup, it's okay. And to cut the meats, if you have meats, cut the meats, small pieces, put it in pressurized uh, oven and get rid of soup. This will uh, decrease the phosphorus content. And if you are lucky to have an expert in nutritional prescription by Dr. Abdul, she will help to give the patient the choices of high protein and the low phosphorus content because th this is the her job, her job. And there is an interesting paper that uh, was published as policy forum from New Jersey showing that the drugs that we give to our patient uh, are not free from this claim. They looked at 200 drugs that are already given to hemodialysis patients. And then they logged at the insert. They found that phosphorus contents are clear, clearly written within 30 drugs out of 200. This means that 11% only of the drugs used by the hemodialysis patients are labeled regarding phosphorus content. They thought it, the other drugs may have no phosphorus or have phosphorus, we don't know. So they bring all drugs and apply the test, standard test to evaluate phosphorus content. And it was very big surprise that the majority of these drugs contain large portion of phosphorus that make the control of phosphorus in the anesthesia more problematic. At the end of this large comment, optimized the analysis, take care of what the patient eats, and if you have a good dietitian, this will make a difference. For sweet binder is a must, and it should be individualized according to the patient characteristics, cause and availability. Dr. Hassan, there is a question before you are coming uh, from our colleague uh, about the certificates. I was talking to him about your uh, program coming for the uh, for the uh, Mansour University. He was asking about it. They, they don't know. Uh, he he, talk, he spoke to me yesterday, and uh, will take agreement because I said to him that the program uh, renal nutrition will be expensive for non so We will discuss together how to solve this problem. But there is flexibility in. The lectures of this program will be online, lectures online. And then there is a necessity, a necessary period to be stay, to stay here for a low book fulfillment and to meet the experts. And I can decrease it to the maximum I can, which is three months. Through, so if you apply, if any international guest applies for the renal nutrition fellowship, I can go down to three months, just only to stay in Egypt three months. And the rest of the uh, two years can stay home, uh, uh, reading through online and uh, solving the exams, yeah. Do you have any questions? Yes, please. Yeah, thank you. Thank you for your presentation. So, I'm talk talking about the diet. So, it's, it's a real problem in our kind of consultation. We usually put our passion on diet. So in my in my in my country, I used to say to my patient that uh, the patient on dialysis should celebrate his birthday on dialysis session. As you say, as, as you said, the, the on dialysis the the first the phosphoremia go down after two hours. You see that? Yes. Yes. So, is it is it is it is it good to say that the the, the patient on dialysis uh, on dialysis can eat every every everything he wants to, to to eat just on doctors on the dialysis So the question will come in the 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 in the
So the frequency of dialysis will increase, it will be more effective for yeah. phosphorus removal. Yeah. And they did in France, yeah. the tournament daily hemodialysis six times a week. It was very effective. Yes. So, Dr. Hussain mentioned, sorry, Dr. Yes. Hussain mentioned it now and two and, and just about five minutes ago. Yeah. Make it four seasons a week. Yeah. If it is persistent hyperphosphatemia, yeah. if you educate the patient, you are using a phosphate band and it is not efficient, you can increase one season yeah. temporarily until you control the phosphorus. So I'm, I'm agree with uh, with me beside beside the, the session. Four four session. So so. On the on the session, so we our, our patient is in the session. In the session, in the session. Yes. Uh, is it possible to allow the patient to eat very nice one, question. one one very, one very, one very, yeah. on session? That's okay, very nice question, but I will not respond to your questions, and we leave it after Dr. Andrew Mayer presentation about intradiuretic hypertension. Just not to do interference with the presentation. And I, 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 I remember because and if Dr. Ayman will not respond to it, I will I'll make a conversation with you. Okay. okay. Do you have any question for Dr. Hussain or Dr. Duan? Any other question? Thank you very much, dear brother, Dr. Hussain and Dr. Duan, for this presentation. Uh, so it's my pleasure and honor to present and to, to, to introduce my 